In this video, we're going to take a look at geometric sequences as functions. The explicit formula for a geometric sequence is a sub n equals a sub 1, which is our first term, times the common ratio r to the power of n minus 1. And that is always useful for finding any term in the sequence if we know the common ratio r and the first term. The recursive formula is a sub n equals the common ratio r times the previous term in the sequence, which is a sub n minus 1. And this one is useful for finding just the next term in the sequence. So let's look over our example and answer some questions. Have you ever gotten a message like the one below? Are you hoping for good luck this week? To be sure your luck survives, you must send this message on to five. Be warned, if you don't share this with five more people, something horrible will happen to you. So find five friends and send this on. Something wonderful will come your way if you do. Don't break the chain. How many people can this message really reach if everyone actually sends it on to five more people? Suppose that the person who originally sent the message on day one only sent it to four people. Complete the table, assuming that when people receive the message on day two, they sent it on to five more people and so forth. All right, so day one, the original person sent it to four people. So let's put that in. And then starting on day two, that person sent it on to five people. So those four people sent it to five people. So you want to multiply the four by five to get 20 for the second day of emails. Then those 20 people sent it to five people each. So you want to say 20 times five. That would be 100 people now have received the email. And then those 100 people all sent it to five people each. So 100 times five is 500. And then the pattern continues. So 500 people sent it, all of them sent it to five people each. So that would be 2,500 by day five. That number's getting really big. And then 2,500 times five is 12,500 people. All right, so we're going to create a graph of this, but we're not going to use every one of those points since the numbers get really big. We're just going to plot the first four days. So let's set up our graph. Let's say our independent value, which is like the x-axis, is days. And the y-axis is our dependent value, which our emails sent. Then let's make every other box worth one day. So let's just say one, two, three, four. And then every box on the email, like the y axis, we're going to put is equal to 25 emails. But it helps to not label every single box because it just gets really crowded. So let's say 50, 75, and put 100. And then that'll be 25, 50, 75, 200. And then 25, 50, 75, 300 and then 25, 50, 75, 400 and then 25, 50, 75, 500. So that'll allow us to plot nicely those first four days of emails and we get an idea of what this would look like. So on day one, they sent four emails. So that's really close to the zero. <clears throat> For day two, they sent 20 emails. So that's definitely closer to 25. Then on day three, they sent 100 emails, or that's how many were sent total. And day four, there were 500 emails sent. So notice it definitely jumped up quickly as you went. So now we're going to write two equations to represent this sequence, explicit and recursive. So refer back to the top of your page for this part. And let's pick out the first term and the common ratio. So our first term in the sequence was the four emails and the common ratio r was the fact that we had to multiply each by five because remember this was times five this one was times five like that's what was happening each time as we went so the explicit formula is a sub n equals a sub one times the common ratio r to the power of n minus one so we have a sub n the first term is four the common ratio is five and then we'll just leave those ends because we don't know what term we're talking about yet. All right, for the recursive formula, let's write a sub n equals r times a sub n minus 1. So that'll just be a sub n equals the common ratio, which is 5, times a sub n minus 1. Okay. Okay.
So that's it for that example. Let's just look at two more quick examples. Number three, our example, or excuse me, problem number three says we have a sequence 2, 6, 18, 54. We want to figure out some things about this sequence. We want to find the next three terms, the common ratio, and write out the explicit and the recursive form. Okay, so to start out, let's figure out what our common ratio is. So let's divide a term by the previous term. And I like to do it twice just to be sure that I've got it correct. So the common ratio R would be 6 divided by 2 or 18 divided by 6, both of which give me 3. So then to figure out the next three terms in the sequence, I can just take the last term and multiply by 3. So 54 times 3 will go here, and that is 162. I already used my calculator ahead of time to save a little work, but you can use yours if you need it. Then 162 times 3 would give me 486, and then 486 times 3 will give me 1,458. So I have figured out the common ratio and the next three terms in the sequence. So now let's write out the explicit and recursive. So I'm going to write the explicit form would be a sub n equals the first term. So let's put the first term was 2 times the common ratio r, which we figured out was 3. So I'm going to jot that down too. Let me make that look a little better. So 3 to the power of n minus 1. And then the recursive form is a sub n is equal to the common ratio, which we figured out was 3 times the previous term, which is a sub n minus 1. All right, so last example, it just has some decimals, but works the same way otherwise. So the common ratio r would be any term divided by the previous term. So let's take 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.01 which should be the same thing if we divide 0.36 by 0.06, which just gives us six either way. So the next three terms will be to take the last term and multiply by six. So 2.16 times six would be 12.96. I calculated that in advance. And then that number times six is 77.76. And 77.76 times 6 is 466.56. But you could certainly do that on your calculator as well. So let's write out the first term is equal to 0 0.01 and the common ratio was 6. And then we can write out the explicit and the recursive form. So the explicit form would be a sub n equals the first term, which was 0 0.01 times the common ratio of r which is 6 in this case, to the power of n minus 1. And then the, the recursive form is a sub n is equal to the common ratio times the previous term. So that's just a sub n minus 1 times 6, or 6 times a sub n minus 1. All right, so that is it for this video.